but let, let's have a little talk about NXT from this past Wednesday. And it was hot off the heels of Takeover Portland. Uh, did, did you catch Takeover Portland? If so, what did you think of that show? Um, I did, and I will be honest. I I spoke to uh, Callum the other day, and I said to Callum, I think it might be the best takeover I've seen so far. Um, I thoroughly top to bottom, start to finish. Uh, it was possibly the best takeover I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm kind of getting those vibes as well from people uh, out there um, on Twitter and Facebook, and I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. My only criticism, I, th- I thought the main event went a little bit too long, um, but uh, otherwise, I thought it was a stellar show, a really stellar show. But uh, this week's show kicked off with a, an in-ring promo from the Undisputed Era with uh, Adam Cole telling the fans that uh, everyone wanted to step into the ring with NXT with the NXT champion, uh, but they will learn the hard way um, as, as to why he's the champion. Just then. Roddy Strong, he grabs the microphone, but he's soon interrupted by the voice of the Velveteen Dream uh, to to get further inside the mind of Roddy Strong ahead of their match um, on this week's show. So um, that's going to be the main event segment of NXT this week. The first match on this week's AEW NXT was uh, for the Cruiserweight Championship, of course. Leo Rush going up against Jordan Devlin. So this was a really action-packed match uh, between these two excellent Cruiserweights. Uh, Rush nearly had the match won following an avalanche Spanish fly and a a slingshot cutter. But after missing his uh, final hour frog splash, Devlin drilled Rush with a headbutt and a Devlin side suplex uh, for the pinfall victory to retain his NXT Cruiserweight Championship. So this was a a really good match. The fans appeared quite into it. Um, A a, a very solid opener. Uh, But with the news coming out of TakeOver Portland that there will be an NXT UK TakeOver in Dublin in uh, April, I think it's April the 26th, I'm sure that Jordan Devlin would love to be a part of that show in Dublin on April the 26th. Um, Have you been to any of the NXT UK TakeOvers yet? Um, Would you consider going to Dublin to to catch this one? And uh, what's your thoughts when the news broke about having a TakeOver in Dublin in April? Uh, I've not been to any of the takeovers yet. I, I would love to. I really would. Uh, I've been to a few NXT UK TV tapings, uh, but I, I, I would love to go. If, if I could afford to go to Dublin, um, I would. Um, it's, it's all aff- affordability at the moment for me. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, again, it's going to be great. The fact that the you know the utilising the UK, they're not just basing everything in England. They've been to Cardiff. They're going to Dublin, you know, maybe they'll go to Glasgow next. You, you know, they've got a lot of Scottish guys on the roster. Of course. So, you know, it, it's it's going to be exciting wherever it's at. Uh, regards yeah. to Jordan Devlin, uh, that guy might be one of the best performers in the world right now. When you've got Shawn Michaels and Triple H endorsing you on a regular basis as well, you know you're doing something right. And I, I would like to see a long, very, very long run uh, as Cruiserweight champion for that kid. Yeah, definitely. I'm a big fan of Jordan Devlin and uh, can't wait to see uh, what happens to him next. He seems to be kind of fully uh, embedded into the black and gold brands over in the States. So uh, as to whether we'll see much more of him over in the UK or on the UK brand or possibly at TakeOver Dublin, I'd expect to see him on the TakeOver Dublin card for obvious reasons. And uh, there's also been rumours that Finn Balor is going to be a part of the next set of NXT UK tapings leading us up to TakeOver Dublin because he's going to be featured on that show as well. So uh, it's going to be quite a heavy Irish contingent, I think, uh, going into that show on the 26th of April. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's booked for the next ta- tapings. I think it's uh, NXT in Coventry for the next tapings. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if we get a Finn Balor match at TakeOver Dublin. Uh, it'd be interesting maybe to see him go up against Tyler Bate because I know that was teased a little bit, wasn't it, before? So mm. Finn Balor, Tyler mm. Bate, I'd be more than happy to sit yeah. down and watch. Because so they, they, kind of, they, they planted that seed at, uh, at Worlds Collide. Uh, didn't yeah. they? Uh, just before the Royal Rumble, where they had that, uh, I think Tyler Bate came to or tried to come to Johnny Gargano's aid and kind of got beaten down. So, yeah, that, that's very clever booking. If, if they're kind of playing it that far ahead, that could work really, really well. And uh, um, I know that uh, Tyler Bate is an excellent talent. And uh, I've, I've been to take over Cardiff and Blackpool too. So I know firsthand how excellent he is, but I uh, would love to see him go up against Finn Balor. Like yourself, um, I won't be able to go to Dublin, um, but uh, I can't wait to see it on the network anyway. But so that'll be a pretty tasty match. Oh, hell, oh God, yes, yeah. Tyler <laughs> Bate, yeah, Michael, check my, my money right now. I don't mind at all. I'll, I'll go, go in 
Yeah, I'll go in debt and go to Dublin for that match. <laughs> I'll go with you. I'll go with you. But uh, NXT continued. We, we had Austin Theory was coming out uh, for a match, but uh, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time as Tommaso Ciampa uh, was out there wanting to address the Johnny Gargano situation, Johnny Gargano's uh, actions, and uh, uh, apparently he will turn at TakeOver Portland last weekend. Uh, the very talented Austin Theory suffered uh, the brunt of uh, Chan- Ciampa's anger, uh, leaving Theory laying. Uh, this, it was also announced later on the show that Austin Theory will go one-on-one in a match with Tommaso Ciampa on next week's NXT. But uh, this leads us nicely to uh, the, the first of our listener questions uh, then, Jamie. It's actually from Rob, who uh, is uh, kind of uh, part of the, the Bob Culture podcast. Uh, you may follow Bob Culture on Twitter. But Rob asks, um, uh, thoughts on Gargano's apparent heel turn? Uh, no real explanation as of yet. And uh, possible Bianca being used um in the Mania match uh, against uh, Charlotte and Rhea Ripley. So focus on the first part of Rob's question there. Uh, Gargano's apparently he will turn. No, no real explanation at the moment. Uh, what's your kind of thoughts on what went down at TakeOver Portland last week? And does it look like we're going to be getting a match between Ciampa and Gargano, which was the match we should have got over WrestleMania weekend last year, but we're going to be getting it this year instead? Yeah, I, I, was, I was very shocked. But I really enjoyed it, and it was it's nice the fact that they've they've turned the roles almost, and yeah. with Gargano now playing the heel because Champ has come back and is is super super over. Um, I I I love it. I personally I loved it. I think it's a, a fantastic idea. You know, John is your your quintessential good guy, so I'm I'm very intrigued for the the promos that are going to be coming up with with Johnny as a heel. Um, I, I think it's brilliant. I really do. I I, I love the fact that we've we've raw reversed. And I, I'm excited. I, it's going to be our Mania takeover match. The given is what we didn't get last year. Rose reversed. I, I'm so excited for this. I, I really am. I think it's a really good move. Yeah, and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see a bit more of Johnny Gargano in the lead up to that match. But um, I know they tested the waters last year with Gargano kind of going tweener, uh, a little bit uh, shades of grey with Johnny Gargano. That didn't yeah. really work. And then he kind of turned back fa- baby face. But I, I think they're going to go full blown heel. They need to really to make this work and to have that kind of blow off match we didn't have last year. Um, but uh, I'm fully invested in Tommaso Ciampa as a baby face. And uh, I know that Gargano, he can deliver whether he's a face or whether he's a heel. Uh, I think more importantly is, is kind of talking in the ring um, when the bell rings kind of uh, is, is what he's best at but um, yeah I think they're going to deliver over Mania weekend most definitely I oh, think it's going to yeah. be the match to watch but uh, really really looking forward to that one and I'm looking forward to the build as well I mean these two are great storytellers I think they're going to kind of tell a, a really great story and build the angle and kind of get us more invested week on week get us more heated um, all the way up until the 4th of April so that's going to be pretty awesome um, th- this episode of NXT Jamie it's quite Quite um, Brits heavy, wasn't it? I mean, you had uh, obviously the, the grizzled young veterans. They defeated Real Mendoza and Joaquin uh, Wild. Uh, you also had Pete Dunne and uh, Matt Riddle. They uh, they, they wrestled a match. Um, I think they they faced only Larkin and Danny Birch, didn't they? So we're quite a Brit heavy show this week. It was. Yeah, it's a testament to the British wrestling scene. Uh, we we are stacked with talent over here. And it is a testament to those guys that, you know, they deserve to be getting that platform. Uh, yeah. Pete Dunn's over there full time now. I wouldn't be surprised if the Grizzled Young veterans end up over there full time and incredibly deserving of it. And again, it's a testament to the British wrestling scene at the moment. Yeah, totally. And, and and as I said on our Takeover Portland review with uh, with Mags from the Badlands Pod, uh, you know, just thinking ahead to Takeover Tampa over WrestleMania weekend, I'd love to see the Bros Awakes defend on that show. Um, I mentioned on the review show for Takeover Portland that I'd like to see him defend against the Time Splitters. I think that would be a tremendous match over WrestleMania weekend. The Bros Awakes versus the Time Splitters. But then, kind of thinking one step further, there's other really good teams out there on NXT at the moment that you'd love to involve in a match like that. So maybe you know, just a bit of fantasy booking here between. Me, you, Jamie, you know, a fatal four-way ladder match. You could have the Bros Awaits versus the Undisputed Era versus the Grizzled Young Veterans versus the Time Splitters. I mean, what an amazing four-team ladder match that would be. Uh, you know, that, that would certainly be a WrestleMania weekend caliber match involving the four best teams in the division um, at TakeOver Tampa. But uh, any thoughts on where the Bros Awaits kind of might go? Any potential matches that you would like to see at TakeOver Tampa in April? Um, I again, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch with um, Undisputed Era. Um, yeah. I would love to see the Grizzled Young Veterans get a go, but I've got a f- 
funny feeling that we're going to see them go at it with a Forgotten Sons first. Um, mm-hmm. Who, again, um, are a, a team I, I love. I think they're very underrated, the Forgotten Sons. Uh, but yeah, the bros are weird. I, I'm, I, I admit I was a bit unsure at first, like these guys being put together. But it's really working, and you can see the chemistry of them both as well. You know, Pete's the straight guy, uh, <laughs> Matt Riddle, the, the, the comedic uh, element, and it's it's fantastic. And I I will happily see them defend against anybody. Um, one thing I would love to see, uh, I don't think it's ever going to happen, is I want to see the revival come back to NXT full time. I would love to see the revival and the Bros Awards go at it. Yeah, well, I think if you were to ask the revival, I think they'd love that option as well, to be honest with you. But yeah. uh, uh, one thing I will say about the NXT tag team division, I think it's in fairly good shape at the moment. I mean, you know, for quite a while, it was down in the doldrums. But I think that the latest incarnation of the Dusty Road Classic, I think that's done gone some way to kind of revitalising the tag team division. It did create a few unique pairings and a reformation of Time Splitters and GYV Ooh. and uh, Gallus. They came up for the tournament, but uh, I think it's in fairly good shape at the moment. So you know we can potentially afford to kind of fantasy book, you know, uh, similar to what I mentioned earlier, looking ahead to WrestleMania weekend. But uh, the Bros to wait, they add a freshness to, to, to the division. As much as I love the Undisputed Era, what three times. NXT tag team champions as much as I love them I think the bros always doing a great job at adding that freshness adding that uh, bit of character uh, to the division as well so thoroughly enjoying it at the moment yeah me too absolutely absolutely just the, the vignettes you know them arriving on a golf cart was it it was just it was just brilliant and Pete Dunne sat there and his facial expression does never change Matt Riddle's having the time of his life I'm like yeah this is really working I'm actually really enjoying this and that's that's wrestling. I'm enjoying it. So it's, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm sold on this. Yeah. And I'm just waiting for uh, Pete Dunne to kind of break character and uh, laugh on screen at what's going on. I don't know how he manages to keep a straight face all that time, but it, it's got to happen. And uh, at the moment like, it does. <laughs> it's it's kind happen. of similar to the whole uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan thing in a way, isn't it? It's, yes. Yeah. You're kind of waiting like we was waiting for Kane to finally give in. And you're kind of doing the same with Pete Dunne to break character. So you say, yeah, I love it. It's working a charm. Yeah, and I, I, I like what uh, Pete Dunne, uh, sorry, Matt Riddle said just before they matched at the uh, the Dusty Classic Trophy. has been suspended for 30 days under the wellness, for, for violating the wellness policy for partying too hard at TakeOver Portland. So uh, that was quite fun because he has become, uh, the, the trophy, it's almost, they've added a, like a human element to it and it's become the, the yeah. third member of the team. So I, I love yeah. that part of it as well. I think that's really good fun. Uh, but uh, let, let, let's, let's have a look at the main event of this week's NXT then, Jamie. So it was the Velveteen Dream, his first match after being away for four or five months going up against Roderick Strong now this this was uh, as I said Dream's first match after being put out of action by the Undisputed Era um, I think he was kind of uh, launched off of one of the, the trucks backstage uh, and in storyline mode was put out of action um, for four or five months uh, he made his return a couple of weeks ago of course and uh, uh, this match was, was pretty action-packed throughout. Um, however, towards the end of the match, you had the, the Velveteen Dream. He kind of tore off his, his all-in-one costume to reveal a, a new set of spray-painted tights, revealing uh, Roddy's wife, Mooney Shafir, uh, on, on the front and the back this time on his new gear. Uh, Dream eventually picked up the win. Uh, but the show went off the air with all four members of the Undisputed Era coming into the ring, attacking Velveteen Dream, uh, leading to what many think could be you know, setting up Velveteen Dream as Adam Cole's next opponent, next challenger to the NXT take of the NXT Championship, Jamie. Do you see the Dream as the next number one contender, possibly over Mania Weekend to Adam Cole's Championship um, at uh, Takeover Tampa? Possibly. What's your thoughts? Yeah, do you, know, do you know what? I'll be honest with you. Yeah, that didn't even cross my mind. But I yes, I think that's where they're building. I think that's what they're leading yeah, to. I think that could really work because I was talking to someone the other day, like. Obviously, Gargano and Champa are going to be going at each other. Um, I was possibly thinking Finn Balor, but if Finn Balor's doing a lot of the NXT UK stuff at the moment, who does it leave you with? Then obviously the Dream. Uh, I I would I'd be sold on that. I can even see the Dream beating Adam Cole at Mania Weekend. Um, yeah. But as for the match, I, I just going back to uh, Dream and, and Strong. What I love for this match is the fact that you've almost you've got the Velveteen Dream, the babyface, with heel tactics, with the heel in Roderick Strong, almost being like the babyface defending his family. It's, it's, I like the dynamic of it. 
it, it's the whole, you know, I love the the old school element, you know, the ravishing with Rude when he did the same to Jake Roberts. Exactly, um, yeah. But I'm just watching I'm thinking, this is good, this, because the baby face is being quite a heel here. And the heel in Strong is having to act like a baby face defending his family. And it's, I, I, I like, I've been really enjoying this storyline. And yes, I think you could be onto something with Dream and Cole at Mania Takeover. I think that yeah, could I mean, happen. Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's no obvious, now that we're kind of at the other end of TakeOver Portland, there's no obvious contender. You've obviously got Tommaso Ciampa, and uh, he's going to be, you know, reigniting his feud with Johnny Gargano. You know, it's up in the air as to what they're going to do with Finn Balor over Mania Weekends. Uh, We we discussed earlier that he's more than likely going to be on the card for TakeOver Dublin. So whether they're going to be promoting him on two separate takeover cards at the same time pretty much he is to be asked um so then it leads you to believe who's going to be the new number one contender obviously you see what dream is involved with at the moment with roderick strong and the other members of uh, uh ue getting involved at every turn so yeah i think uh, dream could be the next uh, natural number one contender to adam cole's championship and, and like you said that would be a fantastic match between two excellent wrestlers um that can really tell a story you can just imagine velveteen dreams entrance as well over that but you know that that, that big takeover in tampa it's going to be uh, completely over the top um but uh yeah and uh, you know i i think we've got to the point now with the undisputed era potentially i mean they've lost their north american championship roddy strong obviously losing to keithley a few weeks back uh ue losing their tag goal to the bros awaits on saturday it's only the nxt championship to go and uh you know and Cole, but but there's been rumblings for a long time now about potentially moving UE up onto either SmackDown or Raw, and uh, you know this losing the final part of the Golden Prophecy potentially over Mania weekends uh, could be the catalyst for that, and uh, I think that the Dream would make a good NXT champion. But uh, any final thoughts on uh, on the main event or on uh, this week's NXT then, Jamie? I just again thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't think they ever put a bad show out to NXT. Um, and you also mentioned with Undisputed Era, if they do get that call up, I just hope they get the call up as the Undisputed Era. Keep the four together because mm. they are the best faction we've had in a very long time. You know, the better than the Shield in my opinion, and I would keep them together. So if they're going up, keep them together. Yeah, I totally agree. And I've been giving this a lot of thought myself recently. And I'm thinking as much as I like uh, Roddy Strong, I think the Undisputed Era will be, you know, Bobby Fish and Kyler Roddy will be fine as a tag team. Adam Cole, he's obviously got the, the presence and the character um, and uh, the wrestling ability to handle himself. But I do fear for Roddy Strong. I, I know he's excellent in the ring, but when you get up onto a program like Raw or SmackDown, it's not all about yeah. ring work. It's about character. And I, I don't know whether Roddy Strong's character as an individual is strong enough to kind of carry him through you know any of those two brands so like you say keep the four together you know that they're, they're stronger together i think they'll go a long way as a faction and uh quite interesting what you say that you rate them higher than the shield uh yeah considering it i, I think you know technically wise they, they could be definitely um in that conversation um but uh very very interesting but keep them together please but i do fear for the fact that after they've lost all the gold that you you do kind of see some some you know fractions uh between this group and uh you know it could lead p- potentially to the end of the group but i hope not because they are tremendous as a group and I yeah. do fear for Roddy Strong if he has to go solo. But uh, 